right. Well, I add my thanks to uh, Sebastian for a fantastic presentation um, and to everybody here for the questions. That was a terrific Q&A session. Um, I think uh, Antoinette and Taylor had to arm wrestle with you guys on holding that microphone. Um, so I, uh, it showed the eagerness, of, I think, of the audience to get their word in edgewise on this as well. Um, is Fred Singer still in the room? He left. He left. And Dennis Avery? Also left. I think those two guys would have just been thrilled to see their book put up on this screen. And I... All right, that's just outstanding. And it's real testimony to the power of ideas. Um, I had the privilege of working with Dennis and uh, Fred on that book. We rewrote it, re-released it, and the Heartland Institute distributed 120,000 copies of that book. So, I mean, and four continents. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's just terrific seeing that up there and seeing how it ripples through. I'm going to resist the temptation to try to summarize the, the themes or, or what came out of this conference. I will say just three quick things. The confidence of the scientists that they're right and that the scientific case for man-made global warming alarmism is collapsing, I thought was stronger at this conference than any of the previous six. We used to say we're winning the debate. Now I heard over and over again, we've won the debate. Uh, guys like Bill Gray saying they're crazy. They just, uh, I mean, we're so obviously right, they're so obviously wrong. And their inability to come here and defend themselves, I think, just spoke volumes at this conference. The second thing is a sense of optimism that I picked up in this room. Uh, I think Peter Ferreira's comments and others talking about uh, what the, the next election cycle might look like, what kind of choices in energy policy we see ahead of us. The United States is not Europe, and I think we've seen through the global warming movement and we're not going to make the same policy mistakes that Europe made. I think we're on the, the brink of some real policy changes that reflect sound science and real choices. And finally, I think we're all aware that the current administration on its way out could do some really destructive things. And it's going to be incumbent on taxpayers and voters to make sure that the public is aware of what's going on, to try to put pressure on EPA and the Department of Energy and the Department of Interior to adopt pro-energy policies based on sound science and not allow the other side to, to win just because we step away from the, the battle and think that we've somehow won. Um, I believe we have the email addresses for everyone who registered and attended the conference. We're going to follow up with you by email uh, with links to and updates on how all the presentations are being posted on the website, um, all of your PowerPoint presentations and uh, pres uh, scripts of presentations if they're available. So watch your email for that. Feel free to forward that to everybody you know. Um, let's try to get tens of thousands of people receiving emails talking about this conference. Uh, the fact that attendance was a uh, grand total under 300 doesn't mean that this was a waste of time if tens of thousands of people end up seeing the videos on our websites. Those of you who are bloggers, please blog, blog, blog. Don't stop. Talk about this conference. Talk about the people you met. Talk about their research so that, again, we get that multiplier effect so that people have a buzz about this conference and about the people you've met. One of the main purposes of these conferences, as I've said now six times, because I didn't go to Australia for the, for the one conference that I missed, is to create friendships and personal relationships with scientists who you've only otherwise read about or seen online. And those friendships and working relationships can last a lifetime and dramatically improve your effectiveness and productivity as scientists and writers on this issue. So please, follow up with the people that you met at this conference. Don't let the time that you spent here get wasted by failing to follow up with these folks. Over the course of months and years, you could end up co-authoring articles with them. You can attend their events. They can attend your events. They can help your career. So network the heck out of the people who you've met over the last two and a half days. I hope that you'll support the co-sponsors for this event, six state co-sponsoring organizations. These guys were courageous this time around. Yeah, thanks. Um, for no particular reason, I'll single out two of them. The Heritage Foundation came on board as a co-sponsor this year. We really appreciate that. They're a class organization. 
And it was a real vote of support for what we're doing. And the Illinois Coal Association came on board this year. Uh, much to the distress of our liberal critics, oh my God, the coal industry is funding this conference. Well, I would like to personally thank the Illinois Coal Association for its $500, which, which is the first ever gift that we've gotten from the Illinois Coal Association. I sure hope it's not the last gift that we get from them. And finally, please consider supporting the Heartland Institute. These conferences... <laughs> thank you, Nikki. These... <laughs> These conferences are expensive, uh, and I'm not a good fundraiser, uh, so as a result, I don't raise enough money to cover them, and we really scramble to make payroll in order to cover these expenses. So if, if you can afford to make a contribution, please do. If you know someone, if you've got a rich uncle or somebody in the family or somebody that you work with, please give them a call and ask them if they would consider making a tax-deductible contribution to the Heartland Institute. Uh, we could really, really appreciate it. Um, one final thing, thank you to the Heartland staff. Those staff members who are currently in the room, please stand up. I don't think there are many actually in the room. <laughs> Kevin and Diane should stand up. Yeah. Um, Jim, Jim Lakely, obviously, and James Taylor and Nikki uh, did just tremendous hard work, uh, as did Taylor and Antoinette, and uh, Keeley was doing all the, the electronic stuff in the background. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people came up to me and said this is the best conference ever that's extremely well run. I really appreciate that. Uh, it's a vote of support for our efforts. I hope to see you at a future conference, but at this point we have no plans to do another <laughs> ICCC, okay? So have a great day. If you're staying in Chicago, enjoy the city, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.